Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. On Wednesday, January 8th, 2014, I stood in a packed city council chamber. The council was choosing its next speaker. There was high drama. Melissa Mark Viverito had the votes, but Dan Gorodnik and his supporters didn't show at the meeting scheduled at 2 until more than a half hour later, when they did announce that they, too, would vote for council member Mark Viverito. History was being made. It was in the air and in your bones, a rite of passage, a transformation. A Latino woman born in Puerto Rico had become the second most powerful official in New York City, the leader of a minority majority council. Spanish filled the chambers. Things had changed. Joining us is New York City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. The speaker represents the 8th Council Manic District, which includes El Barrio, East Harlem, and the South Bronx. She worked for over a decade in local activism, nonprofit organizations, and labor before being elected to the council in 2005. In 2009, she was re-elected and served as chair of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. She was the founding co-chair of the Progressive Caucus, and she was one of four council members to pioneer participatory budgeting in their districts. She's a graduate of Columbia University and Baruch College at the City University of New York, where she studied public administration, and where I now teach. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for the invitation, Doug, and thank you for the guayabera. Yes, thank you. My son-in-law's, I mean, he's Puerto Rican. I'm half, <laughs> there my, we go. My grandchildren are half Puerto Rican, so I'm going native. Okay. What were your feelings at that moment when they walked, I mean, after all that weight, they walked into the room, and it was over? What, 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 what were you thinking? I was going to say, if you're going to make history, this is the way to make history, you know? Uh, a lot of drama. Uh, uh, relief, I think, is what I could say. It was a very um, tough race yeah. in, in terms of uh, the level of attention and scrutiny, and I think sometimes unfair characterizations that the media made of me particularly. Um, but but you're we, a woman. Woman, a Latina, you know, um, the idea of someone uh, that that is of a underrepresented uh Group, you and know, also being coming. a fierce liberal, as right. the uh, Times right. described. Yeah. So, so it was, it was, it was kind of relief that that moment was done, and that we could move on to the issue of governance and really fulfill uh, the promises that had been made of making the city council more transparent, more open body. Uh, but that was very much uh, in sync with the members and supporting the members in fulfilling uh, the work that they needed to do for their constituents. So it was. Uh, it was basically, you know, nose to the grindstone, getting to work, and it's been really a great opportunity to serve in this capacity. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's look at the headlines in, in a sense. Bratton and broken windows. The council has recommended, and you have vocally supported, both in the state of the city and in subsequent conversations on this, reducing the penalty for certain offenses to... Uh, I, Minor, minor, minor nonviolent offenses. Right. I think what we are basically saying, and the conversations are at the preliminary state, stages, uh, very much engaged with this administration, with the commissioner. Uh, I appreciate the open door policy. We have very fluid, very much ongoing conversations. There is an open door there that was not there before. Uh, so that needs to be acknowledged. And so we're in the process of really laying out our case. And what we believe, as many of us believe, is that our criminal justice system needs to be reformed in many different ways. We know that there are institutional prejudices that exist. We know that, un unfortunately, uh, Latino and African American youth in particular are unfairly uh, targeted and, and are on the, that end of the stick, so to speak, and that the consequences of them being incarcerated or having this negative interaction with the criminal justice system, you know, has consequences for them personally, 
but also has consequences for us as a city. So we want to have and engage in the conversation debate. We don't have all the answers right now, but we are saying we want to take a look at these areas and let's see where we end up. What are the types of acts that now would be criminal that would not be under the the proposed legislation well, again, or the conceived legislation? Well, there's like there's about seven uh, nonviolent minor offenses right now. Uh, those could include the the issue that people come up, and I think people mischaracterize some of this stuff. Obviously, turnstile jumping, the uh, open containers. Mm-hmm. Um, there's about seven Public different ty- those right type of things that that are in those categories. And so we're just again engaging. There's a lot of discretion and a lot of different ways that officers can interact on those seven uh, level of offenses. But we again, we're having a, com- a conversation. We're really great that Judge Lipman ha- uh, recently and yesterday yep. kind of indicated his support for this overhaul and taking a look at it aggressively. So but again, did, we're, we're... So did the New York Times, even though they didn't mention the fact that the council was pushing this. Right. So we're, we're not there yet. We're engaging in the conversation. And I think, again, it, it is really trying to get at the root of this systemic injustice that exists and how do we try to address it. So we're, we're doing what we can. Okay, but the critics are arguing that you're really undermining, and, it, and, and I believe the commissioner seems to believe so too, undermining the notion of broken windows, which is seen fairly or unfairly, to be the driving force in the, in the, the low crime number. Well, that's part of, you know, the conversation then, of how we view policing. Now, let me just say two, a couple of things. Obviously, you know, we really uh, value the important role that our police officers play in maintaining our city one of the safest, if not the safest city, right? And, and that's critically important, and we want to support them. We are also supporting adding more officers as a headcount to provide more resources to the NYPD. We and do, we'll come back to that. Right. We do continue to have oversight. We want to make sure that there are reforms to the way that po- police officers are interacting with our communities. We want positive proactive engagement with our communities, respectful uh, policing. And there's a lot of discussion happening about reforming the training. That's also conversations we've had with the NYPD, uh, with the commissioner, and hearings that we have held. So there's a lot of conversation in a lot of different areas uh, that we're engaged in to really try to get this NYPD to head in a direction where we have true community policing, Mm -hmm. where we rebuild trust with our communities, where we continue to provide the support and the resources to uh, to the NYPD so that it can be the most up to date and make sure that they keep our city and our community safe. So it's it's a really a lot of things we're balancing at the same time, but that's our responsibility, and we're going to do it. Right, and then yeah, in a sense, the proof really is in the pudding. If the numbers yes. go up and it's sustained over time, your your experiment didn't work, and if they don't, it, well, remember it doesn't go up. all the hype that surrounded oh, right. the Rockefeller drug laws right. when we talked about changing it and yep. abolishing it, et cetera. Right? Oh no, that all hell was going to break loose, and that has proven. To be right. wrong, right. right? So we there's there's examples yeah. that well, we have in, in in the background and we can refer to. But again, again, we're looking at a way that once we can, when we can rebuild trust with our communities, but we try to really make the system more fair and just for every New Yorker. Okay, and then one sort of last comment on on, on that particular conversation. It seems very interesting that you and the commissioner are sort of at at words, and the mayor is sort of and. On the sideline, and he's, you know, the the 900-pound gorilla in the game, and he's considering it while you two sort of, you know, if not battle it out, have a civil but but rigorous dialogue on this issue. Well, look, we are having a vigorous and civil dialogue. But I very clearly have said, you know, I'm not going to allow, and and the commissioner has heard me say this, we were at an event together yesterday, you know, that we are not going to allow, and I'm not going to allow our relationship yep. to be defined by the, or sure. to be dictated by the media. Sure. We have an open door policy. We speak pretty frequently. Our staff are engaged in this conversation on an ongoing basis. And so we, we have that, those lines of communication. However, the press wants to characterize it. That's up to them. And, and that's, that's what they will do. Okay. Now let's look at the flip side of that, which mm-hmm. would be the council's desire and your desire to add 1,000 a a more cops. And last year you wanted to add the number and the mayor didn't add them and only added part of the civilians that you asked right. for. And you're coming back. Now, you've been criticized, on, if you will, on your left, <laughs> you know, by folks like Bob Gangi in his Times letter, which says that, you know, you're a sellout in, in a sense. 
but clearly there's there's a very complex dynamic going on on here because in in many ways a thousand more cops are is very pro cop. Right. And the, and the, and and then the commissioners first said no, and now he's. Now he's on your side. So this is an interesting <laughs> dynamic, right? It's I said, well, I, I'm, you know, I keep saying, like, if I'm being hit by the right and the left, I guess I'm okay, uh, right, right? right? So, right. no, let me, let me be clear. Go the ahead. city council is extremely committed, and we're, um, I could probably safely say, unanimous in, in, in our support of, of the 1,000 additional officers. If we want true community policing, which, as I said, is proactive, right. should, our interactions with our officers should not be just when an incident happens. Um, you know, we need proactive community engagement with our police officers to rebuild the trust. That trust is not going to be built in a vacuum. Right. You, it needs to be done through interactions right. with the police and, department. But, but lots of cops and lots of precincts have this. Right. Well, I mean, so we, we need additional officers to be uh -huh. dedicated to that. And, yep. and Bratton has laid out, the uh, commissioner has laid out some ways that they're starting to implement that in pilot ways in certain precincts, right? So we don't want to have to also pull officers from other specialized areas sure. or task forces and the work that they're doing to keep our city safe in other areas, whether it's, you know, anti-terrorism, uh, et cetera, the, the specialized work that needs to get done. So that's why we believe the more resources to b rebuild the trust and do it in a way that is, is productive. And right. so we support that very strongly. We've been very vocal uh, and also vocal on the issue of, of putting more resources towards updated vests. Right, um, and the money. Exactly. So, so that's something we're committed to. And then at the same time, we're engaging in this very vigorous debate about reforming the summons process right. and how that goes about. Also, the bail fund that I presented. Please uh, talk about The that. citywide bail fund that I presented in the state of the city, where we have a pilot in the Bronx right now that people that are poor and cannot meet bail very low bail, I'm talking about $250, $500, are, some staying, as low as $50. Mm -hmm, are staying in jail potentially two weeks, where you have two people accused of the same crime. One that can pay, has the resources to pay bail, gets out. The other one, because they're poor and can't, sits in jail for a week, you know, 10 days. And, and the imp implications of that, you could lose your job, you could lose your housing, issues, you know, with your family, custody, whatever it is. And then it gets on your record and you've got it on right. your rap sheet. So... So we are talking about trying to amplify that pilot because it's proven to be successful. Those who participate in the pilot um, have a 90% attendance rate at their court hearing dates. Mm -hmm. So we now want to make it available citywide. And we're talking about a $1.4 million pilot, not pilot, it's a citywide bail fund where people that are poor and don't have the resources to pay their bail that would get paid and they would go to their court date and Let, it would get, it would be, re, it would be reimburse itself and be sustainable. Okay, I was just going to put on my, you know, my eye shades and ask, isn't, isn't this a money saver in some sense rather than housing of course. folks in jail of course. for, in some cases, up to three weeks? Right. Well, not only the housing in jail, but think about the impact it has on that person. If they lose oh, their livelihood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they lose their housing, those are the resources. They can't get jobs right. or licenses. So uh, we, those are resources that we as a city would have to expand, okay. right? To help. So it's, it's um, very sound policy. It's actually been well received, and we look forward to its implementation. Excellent. Okay, let's talk about the job. What do you wish you kn knew then that you knew, know now as speaker? You know, that's always a hard, not a hard question to answer. I mean, like, I, I was in the, in the body for eight years. You know, I, we had a, a leader before. I understood what the responsibility was. So I kind of came in understanding that I had to deal with 50 other characters oh like my myself God. and cats. interests. Oh, really? <laughs> um, and, and so that does take a lot of work, right, to really build those relationships. But it's an incredible uh, job in the sense that, you know, you get to see the beauty and the diversity of the city. I visit my colleagues in their districts, meet with community leaders, engage with them at events uh, in their communities, and really get a full understanding of how what makes this city run mm -hmm. and, and what our challenges are. So it's been uh, an incredible opportunity, and I grow every day. Uh, there's a lot of things that... I've learned uh, in this one year and a half almost that I've been in this position. Okay, what's, what's the most difficult aspect of your job? What's it, tough? You know, it's, it, one, it's, it's always tough when you, when you feel you want to do so much. And, right. and your, you know, your capacity is only so much <laughs> that you can do. But, but also the, the, the more emotional side of things, we've had a very rough year and a half uh, with a lot of, unfortunately, um, of our uh, officers that have died in the line of duty, uh, that we've had to go to funerals, and it just makes you gain an appreciation, obviously, of, of really that job, which we all know is you're literally sacrificing your life to maintain uh, safety for our city, uh, our fi you know, fire officers as well. Um, so 
it, that, that kind of aspect of the job, um, the emotional mm -hmm. side, uh, when you interact with constituents or individuals that can't make ends meet, that are being evicted because they can't pay the rent, which is becoming exorbitant. I mean, those are the real, and that you want to do something right, about it. Right, you know, okay. that, That's what tugs okay, at Okay, let's you. do a little uh, stream of consciousness. I say <laughs> something and you respond. Oh, God. I say Albany and you say... Don't want to go there. Why? <laughs> I know. Why don't you want to go there? No, what? I mean, if I don't want to be a... I would not... I, I just... People ask me all the time, do you want to run for the assembly or do you want to no. run for the Oh, no, you Senate? have to be out of your mind. So, we'll talk about running later. So, you know, I, I tell people, like, I really don't No, as to. speaker. Right. What, is, uh, what do I think of Albany? Yeah. Well, there are partners. We, we need their help. Uh, there are things that we need from Albany to, uh, to be able to get things done here in New sure. York, right? So we do develop a state agenda every year. Yep. And we go, yep. these last two years that I've been in office, we've gone up to Albany and yep. interacted with yep. our colleagues. Yep. And um, Yeah, I mean, you produced a really significant uh, legislative agenda for Albany. What about, you know, the budget's over, but the session's not. So you've got rent right. rules. 421A. 421A, the DREAM Act, yes. higher minimum wage. Yes. Is the city going to get, you going to get institutionally, we're going to get any of this? We are going to advocate strongly for all of those things. It's part of our uh, legislative state agenda. We've already gone up during the budget process. We are planning to go back up uh, now before the legislative session is over uh, to advocate for those things and make recommendations on the rent regulation side, on the 421A side. Clearly, we, we've been talking consistently about wanting to increase the minimum wage and New York City having the authority to do so. So we're going to continue to advocate uh -huh. for that. And, and make the, re the case as to why that's the case. And the DREAM Act, which is something that I strongly support and the council strongly supports, and we've been wanting to see it enacted uh, for the past couple of years, and it's been very disappointing that we can't get that through. So let's see what happens. Uh, obviously, there are some challenges going on in the Senate right now. Uh, and, and, this is another, you know, that's so, a very politics statement. <laughs> uh, so we'll see where, where we end up, but we're going to really advocate strongly for all those things that you've mentioned and the things that we laid out in the agenda. But as we talked about, there's the Rolling Stones rule. You can't always get what you want. What might you get? Well, I mean, there's things we can get on the rent regulation side on the 421A, uh -huh. which, okay. which is, I mean, these are tax subsidies right. and tax breaks. Right. And we're which talking is about 421A being housing development. Right. So, so there are things that we can get uh, done there. And on, on the legislation, maybe you won't get 100% of what you're asking for in some of these cases, but there'll You'll be maybe something. something that we can get. Hopefully, we'll get an increase in the minimum wage. Okay. Let's talk about your relationship with the mayor. Uh, you endorsed him. Right away, you were early, and he aggressively lobbied for you as speaker, and probably in many ways the most closely related ideological uh, partners as, and, and in fact partners in, in, in city government. And you've got some significant accomplishments. Talk about what the council's done and the council and the mayor have done right. that was part of your your promise and his promise. I mean, as you said, we, we are very ideologically uh, aligned. Obviously, how we arrive at the points of, that we agree on, you know, philosophically is right. always the challenge. But I mean, we've done some incredible work, the paid sick leave law, uh, the municipal ID program, um, the, the prevailing wage uh, expansion, which he, he did, but it was mm -hmm. a commitment that mm -hmm. he had made before. So there's, there's and areas. And the traffic, the traffic change. The Vision Zero, mm -hmm. which uh, he presented a plan, and we added on a whole bunch of legislation. Yep. So there, there are things that we really work very um, collaboratively on, on everything we have to. We have a very respectful relationship, a very open relationship, and being able to talk openly about the issues of concern. Uh, and figuring out ways that we can move forward. But there have also been areas that we have disagreed. and that, that What are the most happen. significant disagreements that you've had? I mean, the one, because we've been doing it for two years, is the issue the of the police, police. officers. Uh, and so and that is one. Are you at all confident that some number of officers might be included in the mayor's budget? I have confidence. I, I believe, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic. Yes, and it's something yes. that is a real priority for the council. So we have uh, been hearing... A lot of added voices to that conversation mm -hmm. and support. So uh, I, I have hope that we will end up in a better place than we did last year. Okay. Um, let's move on to the budget. Essentially, you folks, the council wants to add about 400 
million dollars to the $77 billion budget. Mm -hmm. Is that about right in terms of... Yes, in terms of some of the recommendations that we've made. Now, is this... Are we going to do a budget dance? I remember the old budget choreography was that the mayor would slice certain agencies or not increase certain agencies, parks, senior centers, libraries, etc., and the council would come in and save them. Bloomberg once, though, did it for education where the council had to actually fund operations of the uh, Department of Ed. What... What's the nature of the choreo? You're one of the you're one of the dancers. What is what is the choreography? Yeah. I mean, it's we're going through some of that. You know, there are things that we had hoped would be baselined, meaning added to the budget, right? And that have not been, uh, and we're seeing that particularly around parks. There's a lot of areas yep. in the parks budget that were not baselined in the mayor's budget when he presented it preliminarily. We did a response of which you're we're alluding to the 400 million. Add on, and then now he's going to come out with the executive. Right. So we're in the process of hoping. And he'll you know, be coming out with the executive soon. within the next week. Or right, because so. we have to have the executive hearings and then we have to adopt the budget. So there's a lot of negotiation between now yeah, and the I executive would, yes. being presented. Hopefully, some of the things that we've been advocating for in our response and if will it, be included. If it's not included, then you've right. got to negotiate. Then we got to, you know, go, go, go into the room and go back and Uh-oh. forth. All right. Uh, tra- until have June 30th. <laughs> he's, a big, he's a big guy. you got to. Judo. I need okay. a couple of steps. Okay. Last substantive area I just want to touch on is undocumented immigrants. Yes. You've got, had passed and the, and the mayor signed legislation that limited cooperation with the feds. Um, and now you, you funded a, a million dollars for a public-private partnership yep. to secure legal representation for the unaccompanied minors. Yes. Talk about talk about that specifically in sort of the larger issue of of undocumented work. So we, you know, this council is being recognized nationally uh, as a city that is doing all it can, you know, really analyzing its legislative powers. The federal government is totally, you know, stymied on this. It is not moving forward. It is paralyzed, and it is a real. Damn shame, I gotta you say. You must be disappointed so, in the Obama right. administration. Well, I mean, now we have the executive orders being challenged. It's it's all it's a mess. It's a mess. So what we have been doing is consistently through the time I've been there, I'm studying what can we do as a city to right. try to send that message that we are a welcoming city mm-hmm. uh, and that we don't want to understanding the dynamics that exist. You know, there are people that, although undocumented, every day are contributing to our city positively, are here for positive reason, uh, and so then we got to make it. You know. Uh, we want to make it as welcoming as possible because it benefits us right. economically. Right. And it makes us a safer city if we have all members of our communities co- you know, collaborating. So we have enacted laws, and also we uh, put forth initiatives that we've funded. The undocumented, uh, the unaccompanied children that were coming over the border, we have about 1,300 here in New York City. We reached out to the philanthropic community, and we got a commitment. We put in a million dollars as a city council. They put in a million. We wanted to provide legal representation to every child that was here on their own. Sure. That's great. It's been a model. Uh, We also have provided legal representation to any individual that has a pending some sort of a deportation proceeding so that they can have... um, uh, the representation. So we have done things that has put us now the municipal ID card, which right. we can put into that category as well. And we've been looked at nationally, uh, and people are asking us. I went to Phoenix a couple of weeks ago because they wanted they need it. They, they, they need it. They need the ID. They want an ID program, and they wanted us to talk about how we implemented it. So we're serving as a model, and this is an area that is an example. We want to do the same on criminal justice reform. We want to do the same thing in other areas, and really show the direction that we can head in as a nation if people start implementing these policies. Okay, now, this is your last term. Your term limited out. <laughs> Where do you go? Now, there's lots of buzz out there. Yes. And as I said, I wasn't going to tell you what I don't the know. Buzz, I, think I, don't, I haven't heard it, really. Buzz, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that you started any of it, no. but you must have heard it. But the, the, the one that I like best is that... You're being pushed by the administration to consider running against what they consider to be a pain in the rear end, Scott Stringer, in the primary. Now, wait. I know you're smiling. Oh, my God. And that one I've never heard. Oh, well, wait a minute. I thought <laughs> I was going to up with a good one. Oh, then, God. Then, you, and then the, what are your other options? Well, you could run. You're not going to go to the Assembly or the Senate because you don't want to go to Albany. Do you want to go to Washington? The 
the feeling out there is no. So I just want to alert you what the buzz is. The buzz, okay. Now, well, what do you what do you see? In so first let, me 1st, say, first let me say uh -oh. that I think there's a history and a pattern of prior speakers trying to use this position to <laughs> position themselves for something else right, it hasn't immediately worked. after and it hasn't worked. So maybe I want to try things a little bit differently. Now how would you so do So I don't feel the need or the urge, I'm not one of these individuals that feels okay well I have to jump from one position, elected position to another. If I complete and I want to fulfill my term, I think we're doing great work. Mm -hmm. This is important work that I'm engaged in, and I'm going to do it for the full term. Um, if there is no opportunity to run for elected office when I leave or there's no position that I'm interested in, I am fine with returning to be a civilian and, and contribute in that way because I know I can contribute positively, and I know that I will have many opportunities Come available. Come work with us at the School of Public Affairs <laughs> at Peru. Come on home. And you then, can teach and then, and consult. And then doors are open. You know, I consider sure. and will weigh any option moving forward. Okay, excellent. My thanks to City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for being on the show. Join me next week when my guest will be Maria Lorino, author of The Italian Americans, and John Maggio, producer of the PBS series The Italian Americans, here on CUNY TV. Excellent job, my dear. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it. <laughs>